been a bit of a crazy week for us here, but we're not quite ready for a full update on our existing project. But our mechanic team, Ryan and Rob, have been hard at work preparing the ride vehicles for Oz Armor Fest. This week, we're gonna watch them service our military US Humvee. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. I caught Ryan and Rob putting away one of the Panzer IVs they've just finished servicing. If you're wondering what that high-pitched whirring noise is, it's four aftermarket fans we installed to stop the engine from overheating. Daryl and Jesse restored this vehicle a few years ago, so it missed out on the Workshop Wednesday treatment. But don't worry, we're very keen to expand the Panzer family. We acquired this Humvee from a contact in Spain. Unfortunately, we're not quite sure of its service history. Last year at Oz Armor Fest, it ran pretty well, but keeping the ride vehicle serviced is extremely important. Two. Good start. Yep. <laughs> Ryan is Bo's older brother, so he doesn't mind him taking up a bunch of space in his workshop. Or maybe he doesn't have a choice. Hey, what, what, what sort of engine is it? A uh, 6.5 litre Detroit diesel in this one. So we're going to do a service, we're going to go do a check over on it as well. Definitely going to change uh, engine oil, filter, uh, we're going to check transmission, we're going to look at brakes, the actual sway bar debushes, one of them's missing, so that'll, that'll um, cause a bit of noise banging around, driving around, so we're going to replace those. Now steering, we're going to go all over that, grease it all up, um, coolant, belts, yeah, just basically over everything servicing wise. Differential, we'll check that too. It yeah. works. Yeah, go right over it, yeah. I was getting that, I'll probably take this air cleaner out. It's probably moved a bit. It looks quite big for the, for the vehicle. Well, they would have, they would have made it like fairly big um, because they, they would have known that it was going to cop a lot of dust as well. So they, a lot know, of sand. Yeah, a lot of sand, all that <laughs> sort of stuff. So the bigger the bigger you make it, uh, 
the longer you can go without having to clean it. It probably doesn't come as a shock to you, but I had very little idea of what goes on during a normal car service. I know that you probably have a lifetime of mechanical experience, but for me, I found the process really interesting. You probably can't see it, yeah. but you can see that duct there. Yeah. But yeah, that's just from basically arm up there. Finding the sump grain, and I'll um, I'll empty out the uh, engine oil shortly. Nice. Right Rob is a new addition to the team. He was an army recovery mechanic before joining us and has a lot of experience with modern military hardware. The oil cools, protects and lubricates many parts of the engine and letting it get too low or get too dirty is bad news for the vehicle. Hey. So what what are you looking at here now? So this is the uh, front sway bar and I noticed um, the other day you can see there's a bush missing out of here. It looks like this one on that side. See it's starting to blow out and this rubber's completely gone on this one. It's non-existent, so it's come off. So I've measured the shot, measured the bar size, 27 mil. Um, I've got some bushes there. Yeah. D-bush, sway bar D-bush. Oh yeah. Should go onto the shaft like this, like so. And then hopefully that bracket, that's one thing I want to make fits is this bracket's going to be the same shape. Oh. Come on down there, my bridle gun. Hey. Yeah, these probably haven't been touched in a long time. So these these actual bushes will probably suit the Land Cruiser, I'd say. Some some model Land Cruiser probably would have that same bush. Yeah, right. Yeah. The sway bar is supposed to help stabilize the vehicle. When taking a corner at speed or with a heavy load, the sway bar, which is connected to the suspension system, twists the opposite way the vehicle is leaning and helps keep it level. It's held in place by these brackets, but without a bush to run on, it can make some rather unpleasant sounds. So that's what Ryan is fitting now. Meanwhile, Rob is matching up a new copper washer to the oil sump bung. It's pretty common on every vehicle that you work on. Yeah. Yeah. They just get reused and reused. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. She's off. Tools like this oil filter clamp are new to me, so please excuse my fascination. And then you just put your ratchet in there, like so. And as you turn, the harder and harder it grabs and grabs more and more, and tightens onto the filter to undo it. Yeah. Awesome. You got the oil filter strap as well. Um, oh. Um, half inch drive, ratchet, undo it. Same thing, the tighter it gets, the more the strap pulls on, grabs the filter. And if he's there. Yeah. So sometimes there's another tool. This. <laughs> oh right. You hammer it through the side. Oh yeah. Then so you just <laughs> shove it in. Yeah. Nice. Will you have enough room for the claw? I'll see how we go. Oh, you're on? Yep, ready? Yep. See how tight it is? See that? See how it's crushing that filter? Yeah. That's mega tight. 
they were they just coming on down there. Come back a bit. Yeah. There we go. Let that drain a little bit. Yeah, and I'll take it off. That. That's what that's for. Right <laughs> on these on these oil drainers. See that little that little thing poking up there. Ah, oh, yeah. The you put the stick the it on there. there to drain the filter. Yep, completely. Nice. Well, you throw it in that oil filter thing. Rob has given the air filter a blast with compressed air and refits it. Ryan is priming the new oil filter. Put it here on the steel. So, get as much in there as we can without spilling out. Um, but we'll, we'll try and, uh, this engine will crank over a bit before it fires, so we'll prime that oil system up pretty quickly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. How he managed to tip that horizontally and screw it in without oil going absolutely everywhere is some kind of physics bending wizardry. Now all of the old oil has drained out of the sump, the bung is back in and the filter is replaced, it's time to fill it up with new oil. Ryan is checking for any drips as the oil makes its way around the running engine. As the engine runs, it pushes oil all through it. So once you've filled up your oil, make sure that you run the engine for a while, check it again, and top it up. So yeah, we got we got the oil level in now, but we we've, we've just uh, basically primed the oiling system. So now the oil level will probably drop. We're just gonna 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 go up to it on the max mark line. So we're in the okay range now. Um, yeah. So we'll give it a bit more and we'll bring it up to just under full. <laughs> Perfect, top of the full. This one says idling and neutral, so I don't know. Whenever you're ready and neutral, are you going to neutral here? Okay. Next level to check is the transmission fluid. Transmission fluid lubricates and through hoses under pressure causes the moving components in the gearbox to, well, move. It's a little bit too full, so the boys draw some out.
Rob scoots under the hammer to grease up the points on the steering joints. And Ryan checks the differential oil level. Differential cover plate anyway, and that's the diff bung. And then on either side of the diff, we have um, the brake calipers and the rotors. So we can see the thickness of the pads, which is quite easy. Yeah, that's see, handy. See in there? Yeah. So that's your thickness of your pad there. That's your disc. And then on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, so we've got plenty of pad. Just like that. Okay. That looks really good. Great. So that looks like it's been changed at some point. Yeah, tighten that bung. Wipe down. This is the transfer case. The drive shaft connects into this system of gears and transfers the power into another shaft that provides drive to the rear wheels. Only four wheel drives have these. Transmission wall. Yeah, so that's just below the bung, which is spot on, the level. It's perfect. It's a little bit discoloured, but that's fine. We're not driving this every day. All right, that's that one. Almost finished doing these um, uni joints, and then we're gonna take it out for a drive. The boys have to give the vehicle a little bit of a nudge so that the shafts turn, making the final few grease points accessible. Time to bring in some muscle. We don't have quite the right size fitting, but it's doing the job. We'll get through. So that took about five pumps. Yeah. If it's been done at service intervals, it should only take one pump. Yeah, Maybe squeeze two. it all through. Mm. But you might be able to see it's coming through. So you can see the new grease there. You can see the old grease at the bottom there is all black. So it's been quite a while since it's seen a little bit of new grease. Up and down. <laughs> that just holds the brake fluid cup down and then off we go. We've got plenty of brake fluid in there. The brake fluid looks good and so does everything else. The boys noticed that the radio was rattling a bit so they tightened that up too. Pretty soon it was time to hit the road. Now get ready for the most Australian shot on the channel and on my word of honour I did not add any audio effects here. These kookaburras are legit. Ryan and Rob have a lot of vehicles to get ready for Oz Armor Fest and we're keen to share some of the, shall we say, more vintage mechanical work on some of our older tanks. So thank you so much for joining us. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.